Routing, pipes and tubes. Create routes from pipes and tubes and then create a drawing. In this tutorial, we'll create the piping paths that you see in this picture and also this tubing path. Then in a separate tutorial, we'll create this drawing. This image shows the first route subassembly that we'll create. We'll start by creating the main pipe path shown here and then we'll create some of these smaller diameter pipe paths. Let's begin by turning on the SOLIDWORKS Routing Add-in. If you go to Tools, Add-ins, and then turn on the checkbox next to SOLIDWORKS Routing, that activates the add-in for our current session. If you'd like the add-in to also be activated the next time you start up SOLIDWORKS, enable it also in the Startup column. If you do not see SOLIDWORKS Routing in your list of add-ins, you may not have SOLIDWORKS Premium installed. My default routing template is in millimeters. Since I'd like to work in inches, I'd like to customize our template. The next series of steps will show how to do this. First, we'll locate our routing template by using the SOLIDWORKS Routing Library Manager. You can find this tool in the Start menu. If you type Routing, usually it will be the first item to pop up, or search through the SOLIDWORKS Tools folder in your Start menu. Select Routing File, Locations, and Settings, and here is where my default template is located. I'll copy the path, and I'll minimize the Routing Library Manager for now. Now let's see if we can find this file by opening up Windows Explorer and browsing to this path. Since this is the first time I've enabled SOLIDWORKS Routing, the Route Assembly template has not yet been generated. To allow SOLIDWORKS Routing to generate one, we'll simply open a new assembly Cancel any dialogs in Property Managers, and then close this assembly. Now that the template has been generated, we'll open up this template and change the units to inches. In this case, since I don't want to overwrite my pre-existing template, I'll create a new template folder and save my inches template to there. And now we'll tell the Routing Library Manager to use this new template. Select Browse and navigate to the new template location. Once you're complete, close the Routing Library Manager and close the template. In this next step, we'll add a rubber tube to our design library so that we may use it to construct a route later on. Click here to open the tube part. Then, in the Design Library tab of the Task Pane, expand Design Library, Routing, Tubing, and here we see the subfolders. Select the Tubing folder and then click on Create New Folder. Type Tutorial and then press Enter. Now select Add to Library, select Tube Rubber, and click OK. If you get this message, select Save, and then close the part. Now we'll adjust a few options, and then we'll be ready to begin our route. Click Options, then select External References, and make sure Include Subfolders is turned on. This instruction is not listed in this tutorial. Since this option is relatively new, and this tutorial document hasn't yet been updated to account for this. Also, select Assemblies, and make sure Save New Components to External Files is cleared, and click OK. Now, click here to open the assembly. And then select Rebuild. 
Rather than modifying the original file, we'll save a copy of it as my skid. To begin our first route, we'll drag and drop a 4 inch flange onto this end. Rotate and zoom so that you can see this face clearly. On the piping tab of the command manager, select start by drag and drop. This adds the routing main folder to the design library and selects the piping section. Double click on the flanges folder and drag a slip on weld flange onto that face and drop. Our list is filtered to three and a half inch diameters. Select list all configurations and select a class 150 NPS 4 and click OK. The tutorial says use default settings here, however, make sure you select always use elbows. This is another default that's changed recently. Then click OK. After clicking OK, a few different things happen. A pipe stub appears that we can connect other pipes to, and a route assembly has been created. Now I'll zoom out so I can see some of the components shown in this image. You can drag the stub to make it longer. Since we're in a 3D sketch mode, when you drag things, it may try to create relations to other things behind it. I'd like this pipe to connect to this flange. The flange contains an R point and a C point. If you do not see these points, make sure that route points are enabled. Right click on the C point and select Add to Route. Now we'll sketch a line to connect the two C points together. In order to make sure our elbows are 90 degrees to one another, we'll set this line to be a long Z. Then we'll select Exit Sketch. And we'll also exit out of the Edit Component mode. I'd like to make some changes to this route, so I'll select the route and then select Edit Route. Let's split the route to accommodate a T in, that we'll insert that will route to this flange. Select Split Route and carefully click on the midpoint of this long pipe. In the design library, select the T's folder. Drag, but do not drop, a T onto the split point. The T is aligned in the Z direction. I'll hit tab to flip the T, and coincidentally, it lines up in the Y direction. Drop the T, and select a 4x4x1.5 four by four by Schedule 40, and click OK. Since I don't want to insert more T's, I'll click Cancel. Zoom in once again on these upper flanges. Right click on the C point and select Add to Route. This time we'll use Auto Route to draw the route segments you see here. Select Auto Route, click on the stub endpoint, and then select the other stub endpoint. Hit the up arrow to explore alternate solution paths. And once you find an adequate solution, click OK. Next, we'll add a ball valve to our route. Preemptively splitting the route is not a necessary step. Let's open the ball valve assembly we'd like to add by clicking here. And then select Rebuild. In my version of SOLIDWORKS, the C points come in as suppressed. I'll unsuppress both of them. And now we'll tile the window vertically. When using these tutorials, vertical space is limited. So we'll switch to tiling horizontally for now. Drag ball valve with flanges onto our route and drop it. 
close the ball valve assembly and save it and maximize the route assembly. In our next steps we'll manually sketch this route. Zoom and pan to the flange on the far left and right click on one of the flanges faces and select add to route. Zoom out and now we'll draw some lines being very careful to snap them to along X, Y, and Z along the way. This first line along Y. The next one, I'll need to hit Tab. Sketch it along Z. The next one, Tab. Sketch it along X. And finally, one more line along Z. I'll hit Escape. I'll reposition some of our previous components to make space for our new route. Select the endpoint, hold control, select this line, and then select coincident. You can now drag these lines to reposition them. Or you may choose to add dimensions to constrain them further. We have an error in our route. In order to manufacture this joint, we either need to add a penetration or another T. In this case, I'll right click on the intersection point and select Penetrate. Now when I exit the sketch, if I hide this component, you'll see it creates a hole. Next we'll create a separate route to connect these two fittings with a flexible tube. Exit out of the Edit Assembly mode and zoom in on this region. When editing the valve assembly from earlier, the routing points might be disabled again. If so, turn them back on and right click on the upper C point on this left fitting and select Start Route. Instead of using the default tube, browse to the rubber tube that we saved in the Tutorial folder here. Make sure Use Flexible Hoses is turned on and click OK. Right click on the upper C point of the other fitting and add it to the route. And then use Auto Route to connect the two endpoints together. And click OK. Exit the sketch. Exit out of the edit subassembly mode and go to an isometric view. Turn off C points and R points and save the assembly. And we've finished. Thank you.